I think so. <laughs> right, okay, I'm giving you a brief introduction into behavioural ecology, which is looking at traits and behaviours of animals, but mainly why they do it. And the main reason, I'm a zoologist, I apologise now. Um, and the main reason, like the main thing I'm fascinated about is the mating behaviour of different animals. So they're looking different species, different genders, different ages, all have different strategies. Males in general, sperm is really cheap to produce. They can spread it around as much as they want and make as much as they want. So they want to uh, produce as many offspring as they can. However, females have a limited number of eggs and they have to give birth and often have to give parental care. So um, they have to like, find the best male so they have the best offspring possible. Um, but this is all well and good, these general rules. There are exceptions to the rules. Uh, there are extreme versions of the rules. Um, there are some animals that have taken it to a really weird level. Um, so I'm going to give you a brief insight into some of the weirder, more unusual, and downright strange like mating behaviours of different animals. Um, bear with me. So, the honeybee. Right, the honeybee is what's called explosive ejaculation. It is as bad as it sounds. So the virgin queen goes on her mating flight and is followed by up to hundreds of males. Uh, in mid-air, the male has to mount the female and with the force of the ejaculation and an audible pop, the penis breaks off into the female, the male falls to the floor and dies. Um, and where the male then another male has to come along and try and remove the penis. It's, it's to do with blocking the female up so that that male knows that the female is her, his. Birds. Now, birds in general don't have penises. Ducks, however, I don't know if they knew the irony of this corkscrew, but ducks have corkscrew-shaped penises. The female has a corkscrew-shaped vagina um, with different twists and turns and dead ends and things. And that's because the female ducks get raped. Um, also not a great story to start with, really. Um, so they have what's called like a sexual arms race, where the female's trying to stop the male from raping her, um, hence the twists and turns. And she's 97% successful, which is pretty impressive. Um, now this is the Argentine lake duck. Now like I said, birds don't have penises. But this vertebrate is, has the longest proportional penis to its body, and it's the same length of its body, about 17 inches long, which is fairly impressive. Um, <laughs> it's fairly impressive. Um, yeah, so this may look a bit of a weird picture, but this is what happened when I googled penis fencing. Um, it really amused me, so I thought it might amuse you too. Um, so flatworms are hermaphrodites, and flatworms have to fight to uh, impregnate the other one. And they do this by penis fencing. They fight with their penises and try to stab the other one. Um, so the one, this duel can last for hours, and the one that ends up stabbed ends up with gaping wounds and pregnant. It's not a battle we have to lose. Um, at all. Right, so bed bugs. These guys, they may look cute in this picture, but no one really likes bed bugs, and it's probably for a good reason. Bed bugs do what's called traumatic insemination, which is as bad as it sounds again. Uh, this is where they stab the female in the side with their hypodermic uh, penis. Um, she has a perfectly workable genital opening, but no, they don't use that, they just stab her in the side. Um, and this is thought because it injures her, so it prevents her from remating, or she probably would want to ever again. Um, quite often they can end up dying and with really bad wounds, it's, it's not a good experience, I imagine. Uh, so most of you, I think, would probably assume this was a male uh, hyena. It is not, it's a female hyena. Female hyenas what's, have what's called a pseudo-penis. So their clitoris and their vulva is shaped to look like a penis and balls. They have to have sex through it and give birth through it, hence the really weird angle. You can imagine sex is a bit tricky. That's because females are dominant in the species, so therefore they have to like be consenting to the male thing to have sex with her. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a weird position. Um, yeah, so then the Argonaut is a type of little like, octopus type thing. It has a shell and um, it has a detachable penis. So it is a modified tentacle um, that is free swimming. So it detaches its penis and it swims to the female across like however far it is and impregnates her. Um, it's thought because the male is only two centimetres and the female is ten centimetres, it's to do with not getting like killed by the female. Uh, for years scientists thought the swimming penis was actually a parasitic worm in its own right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so now just on to big penises. <laughs> um, so blue whales have about a penis about 8 to 10 foot long, and elephants are about 6 foot. Proportionally, this is fairly impressive, but not that much more impressive than males, uh, human males. However, you really want to look at the barnacle, which has a penis 40 times the length of its body, which would be about 240 foot in a uh, human, so about seven and a half double decker buses, I worked it out. And um, that's because it has to obviously reach out to the other like, barnacles stuck on rocks, like, 
Yeah, so that's the end. Um, I haven't had time to tell you about the echidna that has a four-headed penis. I haven't told you about the sadomasochistic snails. And I haven't told you about the orgies that happen with garter snakes. I hope you don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, ask later on. Yeah.